1933, a Chinese bridge worker buried a skull in a well to keep it safe from invading Japanese forces. He told no one, not even his family, until he lay dying nearly 90 years later. That skull, now known as the Harbin Cranium, or more dramatically, Dragon Man, has become one of the most important paleoanthropological finds of the century. Why? Because new research has just confirmed what some suspected, but few dared to speculate on without any evidence. This ancient fossil contains DNA from the mysterious Denisovans, a lost branch of humanity we've only glimpsed through scattered bones and genetic ghosts. Until now, the Denisovans were a mystery cloaked in shadows, known only from fragments buried deep in Siberian caves and from faint traces in our own DNA. They were ghosts, shadows. But this skull gives them a face and a story. This discovery doesn't just redraw our evolutionary family tree, it lights a fire beneath it. Who were the Denisovans? Or should we call them Homo longi? How far did they spread? And how much of them lives on in us? The answers are starting to emerge one molecule at a time. Welcome to Archaeology with Flint Dibble, where we dig deep into the real mysteries of our human past. Not that fake garbage that dominates so much of social media, the real deal that archaeologists are uncovering now. The Harbin skull was first unearthed in the turbulent year of 1933 in Harbin, a city in northeast China. A laborer dredging mud for a bridge across the Songhua River found something strange, massive, heavy, and unmistakably human. But with Japanese troops advancing and war looming, he chose to hide it. He lowered the skull into an abandoned well, apparently to protect it, or perhaps to protect himself. He took the secret to his grave. In 2018, the skull was recovered from the well and paleoanthropologist Ji Cheng convinced the grandson to donate it to a local university for analysis. When researchers finally examined it, they were stunned. Over 22 centimeters long, with thick bones, a broad face, and a brain comparable in size to ours. This skull did not fit cleanly into any known category. It is the longest known hominin skull, with thick brow ridges, an enlarged nose, large eye sockets, and an enormous molar for chewing. Some suggested it might represent a completely new species, Homo longi, aka Dragon Man. Others urged caution, comparing it to Homo daliensis or the Denisovans. But everyone agreed this fossil was ancient, enigmatic, and important. Over 2,500 kilometers from Harbin, in the remote Altai Mountains of Siberia, a tiny fragment of bone was quietly rewriting history. In 2010, scientists published DNA extracted from a pinky finger bone found deep inside the Denisova cave. What they found was astonishing. The genome didn't match Neanderthals. It didn't match modern humans. It was something else, a new lineage. These archaic humans, dubbed Denisovans, lived alongside both Neanderthals and early Homo sapiens. They interbred probably with both. They left their mark not in fossils, but in our genes. And the twist? We have almost no idea what they looked like. Aside from that pinky bone, a few teeth, and a mandible bone, Denisovans existed mostly as a genetic whisper. The mystery deepened with each new trace of DNA, and yet we still had no face to put to the name. Could the Harbin cranium finally be that face? Some scientists thought so, even before the recent DNA findings. The skull's robust features, geographic location, and age aligned suspiciously well. As Dr. Chris Stringer told me last year. And this fossil was probably at least 150,000 years old from China, from Northeast China. And, you know, it's beautifully preserved. It's got 
one massive molar tooth in it, which we see matches what we see at Denisova Cave. Yeah, you've got a picture of it put, put up there. Um, it's a wonderful fossil, um, mysterious. You know, we could talk for quite a while about this fossil. It's got a very mysterious early history, how it was discovered. Um, but it seems to be a distinct human. And now there's data from a number of Chinese fossils pointing to them being Denisovans. And I would say Harvin is the best preserved example now of okay. a Denisovan. But without hard scientific evidence, it remained a tantalizing theory. That is, until now. In 2003, after more than a decade of effort, scientists unveiled one of the most ambitious scientific projects in human history, the full sequencing of the human genome. Over 3 billion base pairs of DNA, the complete instruction manual for Homo sapiens, us, laid bare for the very first time. But mapping the modern human genome was just the beginning. The real challenge was looking backwards into the genetic echoes of our extinct relatives. Could DNA survive tens of thousands of years? Could we read it? The breakthrough came in 2010. The Neanderthal genome was decoded, winning Svante Pabo and his team at the Max Planck Institute for Human Evolution a Nobel Prize. The results shattered long-held assumptions. These so-called cousins weren't evolutionary dead ends. They had interbred with early humans. Their DNA lives on in all human populations today. All of them. Yes, even in African populations, despite what you have heard on the internet. After all, after Homo sapiens left Africa tens of thousands of years ago, some returned in the millennia that followed. And those that returned carried back a small percentage of Neanderthal DNA. We call this genetic introgression. So while African populations have a smaller percentage of Neanderthal DNA than people elsewhere, it is present in their genomes. These discoveries showed that human evolution was not a tree with branches extending out from a trunk. It was instead an interconnected web, a network of hybridization, extinction, survival, and resilience. The key to unlocking this web was next generation sequencing powerful enough to read millions of DNA fragments at once, even when they're damaged. Unlike most techniques, instead of trying to recapture much of a genome, it focused on short strands that had been degraded and used informatics and statistical analyses to put them together and reconstruct the larger genome. It found the overlapping bits in order to put them together piece by piece by piece. Techniques like shotgun sequencing and targeted capture let scientists decode strands of DNA in new ways. For example, fragments of food or diseases embedded in the plaque on teeth or even bits of DNA left behind on the sediments of the floor of a cave. Also in 2010, from that single pinky bone from Denisova Cave from about 50,000 years ago, Scientists extracted ancient DNA so well preserved they could reconstruct the genome of an entirely new hominin, the Denisovans. It's ground shaking. But with so little fossil material, this new hominin was largely invisible to modern scientists. It was essentially a ghost, a species of human that had no shape or form. A decade later, Denisovan proteins were also found in a jawbone. And the DNA also appeared in the sediments from Ziaha in Tibet, dating back 160,000 years. Nearby, children's hand and footprints from a similar age, perhaps, possibly revealed the shape of this lost species. The ghost was slowly taking form. But the only thing we were sure of was that Denisovans had large teeth to help them break down and chew tough plant material. Like Neanderthals, Denisovan genes are found in modern humans, with a higher proportion in Southeast Asia, several Pacific Oceanic populations, and Tibetan people. The new scientific methods developed over the last two decades didn't just reveal the Denisovans, they resurrected them. From empty soil, scientists conjured ancient genomes. From crumbling bone, they mapped extinct relatives. When and where they lived, bit by bit, this lost hominin population we call the Denisovans became 
visible. And it was with these very techniques that scientists would return to that Harbin skull, the Dragon Man, and unmask the ghost. When researchers first examined the Harbin cranium in detail, they knew they were looking at something special. The skull was large, larger than any known Neanderthal, but still distinctly human. Its brain case was modern sized, but the facial features were robust, almost primeval. It didn't fit neatly into any known species. Was it a new kind of human? A long lost cousin? Or something else? For years, the missing piece was genetic. The Harbin skull was too old and preserved in the wrong conditions to yield a clean and complete genome. Since researchers were unable to extract nuclear DNA from the Harbin skull, they attempted and succeeded in recovering mitochondrial DNA from hardened dental calculus. This mitochondrial DNA closely matched known Denisovan mitochondrial lineages from Siberia. And the results are in. The Harbin skull shares distinct genomic traits with the Denisovans. In parallel, proteomic analysis of the skull, isolating 95 organic proteins via mass spectrometry, revealed protein variants uniquely shared with previously known Denisovan fossils, like Denisova 3 and the Zia head jaw. These were not a perfect match, but did show unmistakable similarity. Morphologically, genetically, and proteomically, Dragon Man clusters closely with what little we know of Denisovans. The team, however, didn't stop there. In the new studies published in Cell and Science, they ran side-by-side -side comparisons of the Harbin skull, other Asian fossils, and Denisovan DNA traces. The conclusion? This skull likely represents a population of Denisovans or a sister group that was closely related, potentially blurring the line between species. Suddenly, Denisovans weren't just isolated to their well-known Siberian cave. They were throughout China, spreading across Asia, adapting to new environments, and eventually mingling with Homo sapiens and possibly other hominins. For the first time, we may have found their face, and with it, an entire hidden chapter of human evolution is coming into focus. For decades, the story of human evolution was told in straight lines. Australopithecus became Homo habilis, who became Homo erectus, who became us, Homo sapiens. But the truth is far messier. With every new discovery, we see a picture not of linear progress, but of a braided stream species overlapping, diverging, interbreeding, introgressing, and sometimes disappearing. And by disappearing, as we see, we don't mean genetically. We mean the morphological features that change and shift and adapt and eventually become us. But their genes, as we see, are in all of us. The Denisovan link to the Harbin skull refines our view of prehistory. These weren't just shadowy cave dwellers in Siberia. Denisovans were widespread, from the frigid Altai Mountains to the high altitude Tibetan Plateau, and now deep in northeastern China. They weren't primitive either. Evidence suggests they adapted to extreme environments, passing on genetic advantages to modern humans, including high altitude adaptations seen in modern Tibetan peoples. They may have even had culture, tool use, and even language. We'll see, maybe, with more discoveries. So who really are our ancestors? The Harbin skull shows that the boundaries between species, like Homo sapiens, Neanderthals, and Denisovans, may be more porous than we imagined. These were not distant evolutionary cousins. They were neighbors, interbreeders, possibly even co-parents of hybrid lineages, those same lineages that became the hybrid us. And it raises a haunting question. What else have we already found, but not yet recognized? How many dragon men or Denisovan women lie hidden in museum collections, misidentified, waiting for researchers to find funding and laboratory time to catch up? Each new method we develop and apply to older archeological remains brings the past into sharper focus.
And as that focus deepens, so does the mystery of who we truly are. In the shadows of prehistory, the Harbin skull sat in silence for nearly a century. Now it speaks, and its voice echoes across continents and millennia. Dragon Man may be the face of a people we once called ghosts, the Denisovans. Not vanished, but woven into all of us. But not everyone agrees on the label. Some researchers argue that the Harbin skull is distinct enough to warrant a new species name, Homo longi, while others contend it falls squarely within the Denisovan lineage. As Dr. Chris Stringer told me recently, I'm really quite confident, and the species name that was given to Dragon Man uh, was Homo longi. And mm -hmm. I regret that I didn't put my name on that paper. I could have, they did offer me to join them. <laughs> and I was, at that stage, I was saying, well, it's probably Homo daliensis has priority. But more research suggested that that name was never properly formally defined. So, so, the, so the daliensis name is probably invalid. And Homo longi, uh, Dragon Man, becomes the, the species name for, if we want to give the Denisovans a species name, then it, it probably should be Homo longi. Hmm. Okay, that's, that's very interesting. Um, this debate underscores how even with genetic clues in hand, the lines between species in our evolutionary past remain blurred. We're entering a new era, one where ancient bones meet 21st century science, and where long lost relatives step into the limelight through strands of DNA and molecules of proteins. If you're fascinated by how science is reshaping our human story from the dirt under our feet to the code in ourselves, make sure to subscribe to Archaeology with Flint Dibble for more deep dives into archaeology, history, and the unexpected truths of our past. With every new discovery, the past grows stranger, more intricate, and more alive. Because the deeper we dig, the more we realize we've only just begun to uncover who we really are. Every day, us archaeologists are chipping away at the mysteries of our human past. Thank you for listening. Make sure to give it a like and a comment. I appreciate it all. Love and archaeology.